Hi, it's Jason Waters and welcome to my Mortgage Minute. With us today, we have Ariel and Cindy Blackwood with the Blackwood Real Realty team. Welcome. Hello. How are you? Doing great. Good. Well, thank you so much for joining. Um, I know I'm excited to talk to you today because we have uh, something pretty unique, I think, to show every buyers and sellers and everyone out there in terms of the psychology of real estate. So that's really what we're just going to dive right into. First of all, I want you to tell me about yourselves and your backgrounds, and then we'll um, and about why you want to talk about psychology psychology of real estate. I'll start here. Uh, so in 2008, uh, we lost my brother, obviously my mother's son, to suicide. And we will certainly not dwell on that throughout this episode, but it's important uh, in order to set up why we are so passionate about real estate. Um, and so after having lost my brother to suicide, we became fascinated by, understandably, psychology and how grief affects families and individuals. And what really stood out to me in particular, my mother was already in real estate, but what really stood out was the importance of recognizing psychology in transactions and meaning uh, how to recognize change and, and what a big deal and what a big change any real estate transaction is. And so, that being said, uh, my background more specifically is in the research side, and I'll let my mom go ahead and talk about her background as well, but just to kind of set the stage, that's why our passion about the psychology of real estate, that's how it came to be. Okay. As Ariel said, I've been in real estate for a number of years, probably 20 plus. I think I was two when I got into the business, but... Um, <laughs> After, uh, after we lost our son, then I became a grief recovery specialist. And through that, it just was such a beautiful fit to incorporate that into real estate. And yes, buying a home can be such a wonderful experience. And that's what we strive to make it. As you guys can see, we're a lot of fun and, and we want to make it a fun um, experience. But there's a lot of emotion involved with it, too. And grief is actually the, the response to a loss, which is a change in a familiar pattern of behavior. Okay, well, everybody has familiar patterns of behaviors that change. And when you're making a transition to a home, from a home, those are big losses, even though they're not negative in a sense, they're positive and negative. And these impact us. And moving is one of the largest impacts that you can have on children and adults because there's always emotion and there's always circumstances to, behind it. So that's how we incorporate what our background is and we've taken this and used it for to, to benefit ourselves and others and that just we have a better understanding of people and we, we are, like she said, very passionate about helping them and truly understanding what it is that they could be going through rather than just shuffling it through as just another transaction in their life. You're right. I mean, I think you put it the right way. First of all, I'm so sorry for those loss of your brother and son, but I mean, you're so right in terms of psychology in terms of the transaction and and I would say, you know, emotional for people and letting go of things or starting something new and I mean, I see that every day and, and talking, I mean, I get into conversations with people I never thought I'd get into until I got into this business. I mean, I was a commercial banker and it was numbers and who can save me the most money and all that. But now it's so much more personal and at times it could be a tearjerker, but at times it's really happy. And so um, it's definitely a big part of our business, mine and yours. Mm -hmm. so, um, so what else, what else about the real you know, psychology involved in decisions, like if you're thinking about a buyer or a seller, you know, is there advice specifically you want to give or let's talk, I mean, Ariel, throw it to you. Sure. Well, I would say like you kind of touched on uh, as well, it's, it's about first 
wanting to understand the person and the situation, right? So that way we can be most helpful. So there's not really a blanketed answer here other than by understanding, is this an exciting move because maybe someone got promoted and they're moving up and that's the change that they're experiencing. And then we can, we can be excited for them and pop champagne and, and appropriately celebrate. Um, or is this because someone's lost a job or because there's been a loss in the family or um, a divorce? And so this is maybe difficult for a, a family or for children or all of the above, right? And so I think how this impacts what we do is, is we want to understand what those situations are so that when we're at the closing table or, or and, and more importantly, throughout the entire process, we're not just shoving it in their face that how exciting this is because we're going to get a commission check because this could be one of the most difficult times in someone's life. And so that's why we think it's so important as well. And um, the advice that I that I would have is to be open about that, right? To, to be open with your realtor. I think generally speaking, uh, every realtor I've met so far has been human. So that means that we have emotions, some more intelligent than others, but uh, I, the advice I have for, for buyers and sellers is to be open with your realtor and for, for other realtors is, is to also be open with your, with your clients, um, to, to just come together and recognize beyond the transition, beyond the transaction, we're first humans. And that's, that's why I think what we do is especially important because we have that background and experience. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, we're in the people business, not the real estate business. Exactly. So, um, I mean, it, it's all about our, our own credibility and our own ability to, to work with people and solve problems and sometimes be the shoulder to cry, whatever that, whatever that is. So Cindy, how often do you find yourself actually having to be a grief counselor uh, during, I mean, you probably don't have that as much during these transactions, but how do you use that in the transaction? Well, I believe that I use it in pretty much every transaction just because the circumstances are changing. So the change of, in a familiar pattern of behavior happens when you're buying or selling a home. So for an example, if you have a first time home buyer, they may have had a roommate for the last several years. And it is a change in a familiar pattern of behavior to go from having a roommate to possibly living by themselves, or maybe if they're moving in with someone or a different relationship, these are all changes. And, and it's not that they're bad changes, they're positive changes, but it's important to recognize that it is a change and that there will be some adjustments to be made. So in every transaction, there is a change. And when there's a change, then that's where grief recovery helps just because it is, it is recognizing those things. And here's another example is someone that's lived in a home for many, many years and they've raised their children there and they've had so many Christmases there and just so many memories and it, and it can be difficult. They can be moving to some place to retire and they're just thrilled with that. But even helpful things like going to each room and, and remembering some things and talking about that and, and kind of saying goodbye to that home can, prove, can be proven to be very helpful in making that transition to a different aspect of your life. Interesting things I've never thought about. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, the familiar pattern of behavior, I mean, totally understand what you're saying. I mean, whether it's a good change or a bad change, it's, it's still that. That's great. Um, all right. So what else? What else? Um, I know it's a tough time right now, COVID, you know, showing homes, you know, people are isolated. I mean, how has that impacted your business? I think that anyone who is uh, in tune whatsoever with the market knows that it's, it's, it's hot. It's great. Um, I also know that a lot, a, a lot of loss has happened during COVID, right? A, a ton of people have lost jobs. Um, and, and we know that it's been very difficult for people. So a big a, a change that we've seen is um, a statistic was actually that I wanted to bring up is 50% of people between the ages of 18 and 29 are living back with their parents during COVID have moved back here in 2020, 50%. I fall into that category. 
praise the Lord, I am not living with my mother, but, um, <laughs> but I mean, I can imagine for those people, including some of my own friends who have moved back home due to job loss or uncertainty or them living in a place that nothing's open and they have no friends, like needing some familiarity and community has been so important that I've seen people say, hey, well, you know, I was going to buy a house in the next six months to a year, but gosh, now I'm living back with my parents. I'm terrified to buy a house because if I couldn't just break my lease and come live with my parents during this, what if this happens again? And so I think this year has been fascinating to watch the patterns of, you know, different people and how their lives have been impacted because of just that. I mean, I think that we need to be very aware of the the market in the future and how COVID has impacted them. Now, on a positive note, there are many people who have realized that being at home, uh, they're, they don't have enough space. And so now they're upgrading and we would love to sell their house and help them buy a new one. But so, so there are both positive and negatives there, right? But I think just paying attention to the, the details of, again, it's back to the people. How has this year impacted certain individuals and in, in not just them right now, but even their thoughts about purchasing a home in the future? I think that's something that a lot of people are not considering that is going to be very important for us in, in the near future. Yeah. What about you, Cindy? Anything to add to that? Uh, I think she's exactly right in that just being aware and, and realizing that some people may need a little extra hand holding during this time if they become apprehensive or uh, they may take a little bit longer in the process or, or something like that. And just being more patient, I think, with people and, and a better understanding of things that, that could be helping them to either move forward in a decision faster or like she was saying, or maybe delay somewhat. Yeah. You know, I've seen both sides lately where some folks, I mean, and really, I think that happens no matter what the environment, but some people really make the decision fast. They love it. They're good to go. And then I see people that um, cancel that contract, cancel that kind con- every, every little problem that they, they're going to get out and maybe they really don't want to change, you know, but, um, and I know that's what you deal with every day. Um, anything else to add before we close out for the day? What's your, any other advice you want to give um, someone out there looking for a house? Ariel, what about you? I think to sum it up, it would be, you know, any advice that I would give is make sure that you like who you're working with on a personal level as well. We, we want the people that we work with to want to work with us. Otherwise it might not be a good fit. We're not, we're not just out here to, take a deal just because it's a deal, right? We, we, that's the whole point of, of our passion with real estate psychology is that we, we're in the people business, just as you said, right, Jason? So by interacting and getting to know these people, then we can help them make some of the biggest decisions of their lives. Well, we won't help them make those decisions because we're not licensed attorneys, so we can't give advice. <laughs> Um, but you know, we can be a part of some of the biggest changes in these people's lives. So my, my advice to both sides, to any buyers and sellers, as well as to agents is care about people. This is, this is such a special time. And as difficult as this year has been, take a second to care about other people, because when you keep it about people, the business comes second. When, when you focus on people, the money, the business, the success, whatever else comes behind it. And so I think that would be how I would sum this up. And, and any advice that I would give is if you focus on the people, man, you don't need anything else. Perfect advice. It's a great ending. Thank y'all so much. Uh, how can folks get in touch with you? You can either visit our website at atlantahomes.io or you can give us a call at 404-973-0405. Thank you, Ariel. Cindy, thank you so much for being here. Oh, you're so welcome. We loved it. Loved it too. And that's all we have for today. If anyone wants to get in touch with me, you can go to my website, learn about me and my team at watersteam.co or else you can always give me a call at 404-403-8787. 
Until next time, that's our Mortgage Minute.